Hi everyone, Shirtlight here. Don't worry, I'll spare you the long introduction. All you need to know is that you have a copy of SD Gundam G Generation Overworld in your hand. Either figuratively or literally. Now, most people either try to build up their dream team real fast, or venture on a long grinding journey to unlock the whole roster. However, our current objective is to get the bound dock as fast as possible. How does one accomplish that, you might ask? Well, dear viewer, for this purpose I had thoroughly and autistically documented every single possible way to get the space grab, also accounting for weird modifiers such as mono eye only, no captures and many others. Let's start then. If need be, I'll pull up the whiteboard again in case I need to go more into detail. So, generally speaking, there's two main ways to get a unit on a production list in these games. The first way involves leveling up other units and evolving them like some Pokemons. And the second way involves combining the designs of the units that you own. Those are the two main categories I'll be splitting the strats into. There's three development routes for the Bound Dock. You can make one from the Dandelion, the Bjarlund Custom and the Matwu once any of them reach level 4. Developing it from the Matwu route is the shortest one, since all you have to do is to buy the Walking Dumpling, which is available from the start, turn that one into a flat at level 5 and then it's right to the Matwu once you level up the flat. The second shortest development route is the Dandelion one. You basically go from Zaku 2, which is also available for purchase from the start, which you then turn into a Zaku 2 Kai, then Hyzak, then Marisai, and that one turns into the Rosette. In case you don't know, the Rosette is the core unit for the Dandelion, and in this game that's the case as well. As for the Bjarland Custom route, it's a little complicated, because the Bjarland Custom is developed from the original Bjarland, and the thing with that one is that you gotta navigate the convoluted web that is the development tree for the WE7 transformable mobile suits. I don't recommend this one, unless you have a Gaplant on hand, maybe a stiff drink or two. Now, there's also three design routes. The first one involves combining the grab row with a Gundam Mark IV or a Gundam Mark V. Not the most optimal for speedruns, given the aside from the grab row, it will take you quite a while to get either of those two Gundams. The second design route is a little more optimal, requiring only a big row or wall wallow and a donut like unit, so anything from Ashmar to Kahar space type could do. Arguably, the most optimized one of the three is the last one. By combining a quadruped unit such as the Gaia Gundams, the Wakus and the Lagoe with any transformable unit, here I even have a list for you. Main reason being that you can get the prerequisites for that one pretty quick, given that you can get a Gaza C in the stage A1 and you can obtain the Impulse Gundam in A3, which can then be turned into a Gaia Gundam once leveled up. These are the six main ways of getting a bound dock. Now let's see how you can make it faster. Obviously, the capture mechanic is the most useful of them all, allowing you to get mobile suits like the Baku, Zaku 2, Impulse Gundam and Gaza C for basically free. This can be done through either character abilities or the use of a warship specific command. If the currency isn't an issue, there's also certain optional parts which increase the rate at which you level up your units. Another notable feature is the starter unit, which you get for free after beating the intro mission. You can pick one of the various mobile suits piloted by the protagonists and the antagonists of multiple Gundam series. Notable picks include Zeta, Double Zeta, Victory, Wing, Union Flag Custom and the Impulse Gundam, if you want a head start with the Quadruped plus transformable unit strategy. There's Mark II, Hyakushiki and New Gundam as well, if you want to take the slower design route. Among the units that can be purchased from the start, 
The only ones useful for the purpose of these runs are Walking Dumpling, Gaza C, Egg Guy and Zaku 2. Sometimes also Jin and Tornado Gundam if you're going for certain alternate routes. Okay, this is where the normal part ends. Everything from now to the timestamp on the screen right now is going to cover oddly specific stuff concerning rule modifiers and so on. Feel free to skip ahead, hell, I even recommend it. Alright, now that all the reasonable people are gone, here's what you can do to make the runs more challenging. Modifiers. Some people love them, some people hate them. Regardless, here are some that I came up with. Besides, I need an excuse to use the remainder of my notes. Starters only is the least restrictive modifier, as it still lets you use the few purchasable units that are available from the start. This means that you can get the Bound Dock either by leveling up and developing the Walking Dumpling, or the Zaku too, no big deal. Monoway only is an equally simple modifier, with your two usable unlock crowds being either developing a Zaku too, or capturing the Gazo C in the stage A1 and capturing the Baku units in the stage B2. No combinations modifier makes the progress a little slower. You can either buy any of the two aforementioned starting units and going from there or capturing the Zaku 2s in the stage A4. Another modifier that can prevent runs from being too fast is the restriction on certain beginner mobile suit picks that would in any way help you with getting the bound dock. Zeta, Victory, Double Zeta, Impulse, all that stuff. Runs with no level ups can be done by capturing the Gazi in A1 and Baku in B2, which I mentioned earlier. The no purchases modifier doesn't restrict you too much given that you can still capture stuff and get the bound dock through the usual ways. No captures makes you reliant on buying any of the two star units or executing a specific strategy on which I'll elaborate in a second. Let's say for the sake of the argument that you cannot capture units and you can't buy units either. You're left with two tornado Gundams and one Phoenix Zero as your starting unit. In a run like this you have two choices, you either use the exchange slash barter mechanic to downgrade the Tornado Gundam into the Zaku 2 or the Walking Dumpling, or you start grinding levels on the free machines that you were given. By doing so you can turn the Phoenix Zero into a Zeta or a Victory Gundam, and now what you do with the Tornado Gundam is that you turn it into another Phoenix Zero, you turn that one into a Phoenix Gundam, then Phoenix Gundam full power, and after doing so you can easily obtain the Impulse Gundam. A little convoluted, I admit, but this combination of modifiers doesn't leave too many options. Lastly, there's an alternate route for obtaining the Impulse Gundam by leveling up a Jin or Stride Dagger and following their development routes respectively, in case you want to go that way. Anyway, that should cover every single way to get the Bound Dock in SD Gundam G Generation Overworld. Now there's probably a question on your mind after sitting through the whole thing. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? I've got a couple of reasons why. It was mostly for fun, but you could technically do a similar thing with other units, maybe even do challenge runs on a new save file, while basically competing with other people to be the first to obtain a specific unit. You know, that could be fun. Besides, if you feel a little burnt out from grinding or if you feel like these games, could use some more replayability, this might come in handy. Should you happen to enjoy this video, there's the buttons below the video and the comment section in case you wanna let me know. Shirtlight, signing out.